together to learn more about why men buy sex, we felt it was critical to understand the attitudes, backgrounds, and behaviors of these men. But equally important was to understand why men don't buy sex. So we commissioned a study to interview 101 men in Boston who have purchased sex and 101 men who didn't. And we compared them by uh, age, race, and education level. And the outcomes were really interesting. Prostitution has very little to do ab about sex and everything to do with power. And that was loud and clear from these interviews. Whether men were buying sex because they wanted the so-called girlfriend experience, or whether they were buying sex because they wanted sex no strings attached, they wanted it their way. You know, they try to make you feel sorry, believe me, and my wife left me and I, I need company, blah, blah, blah. But that's not what they're there for. They're there for a bit of control. They, I think all Johns have a control issue. A lot of people ask me, you know, what is the average John? And he's exactly that average. Our police tell us that they pull over minivans with car seats in the back all the time. One of the big topics on the street is always that the men all want to do it without condoms. And one of the women uh, said that, uh, oh yeah, the ones who don't want a condom, that's always the one with the kids seats in the car. And I mean, she was kind of cynical, of course, but it just shows that it's just uh, pretty normal guys. We have the buying court here. I don't know if you saw it. It's this really huge warehouse. It's like Macy's would be in America. And they have like a shopping spree, a 10-day shopping spree. And those are the biggest days for the prostitutes on the red light district. So all the dads who come with their wives uh, did you go out for a cigarette or for a coffee break and they all go and visit Red Light District? You see all kinds of men in the Red Light District. You see young guys, you know, just 18 years old <laughs> and barely of age. And you see old, old men. You see people who are disabled. You see people who are married. Um, you see couples. And they're all there and there's no consequence that's very visible on them. Are they nice? Some. Did I have regulars? Yes, and what we call regulars is the steady ones that I would meet on a Tuesday at a certain time every week. You become comfortable with that person because you know that person. Can they switch on you? Yes. One of the men that I was speaking to was telling me about his grandchildren, and in the same sentence, telling me how he travels to the Dominican Republic to purchase young girls for sex. There are different types because you have them evil ones that, yes, will hurt you. I've been left for dead three times by a John. I once talked to a guy in a bar who um, was a German guy. He had been in a relationship for eight years and he came to visit Amsterdam for the weekend. And I asked, you know what, did you go to a prostitute? And he said, yeah, I did. And I said, why, may I ask, you know? And he said, well, I would never have done it in Germany. Um, but here it's just so acceptable. It's what you do in Amsterdam. When you come here, you come here to go to a prostitute. And it was, it was really fascinating to me because I, I, he kind of wanted to excuse what he did. So he said, oh, I didn't have sex with her. I just got a blow job. And then I said, will you tell your girlfriend back in Germany when you go home? And he said, no, no, of course not. Why would I tell my girlfriend? And I was like, but isn't that cheating on her? And he's like, I just don't really see it as the same thing. And I said, but if a girl in this bar offered you a blowjob and you accepted, would you consider that cheating on your girlfriend? And he got really uncomfortable and he said, well, yeah, I guess that's, that's different though. We asked the men to describe how they felt before they purchased a woman and they would use words like thrilling and on the hunt and eager and excited. And then we asked them to tell us um, how they felt after they purchased a woman. And it was words like empty, sad, unloved, um, unfulfilled. You could tell that there was a very deep sadness um, and that what they were looking for, they didn't find.